it is the first week of June, and on this trip, I've decided to drive up Highway 395. Um, right now, I'm near Bishop, and I'm actually I actually re-photographed a scene that I photographed last year in color, but I didn't get great conditions, and I wanted to kind of re-photograph it in black and white. Um, so that's what I was doing here. Um, but I am kind of slowly meandering my way up to the redwoods. So um, you know, I don't really have a ton of time to spend on this trip. I've got about six days max. Um, I've got to get back home. It's my wife's birthday. So we'll see how far I get and how many days I get to spend up there. Um, but it is nice to get out and uh, make some photographs. And uh, this will be the last episode of the season. So as I go throughout the video, I'll uh, answer a bunch of questions. Um, but until then, I will see you guys in the morning. Well, good morning. So the first question that I want to address in this video, and one that I received quite a lot this season, is what's the update on the darkroom? So I started the darkroom build, I think it was about late August of last year, and my goal was to get it dried in before the winter. And I, I got that uh, pretty much finished up. I have a little bit of siding to put on one of the gable ends, but overall it's pretty much um, finished on the exterior. Now, the next step in the process was trenching for the electrical and the plumbing. And the plumbing, you actually have to go down about four feet. Um, so, you know, with, with winter, uh, the ground is frozen solid, so I pretty much just put that on the back burner and started work again once spring hit. So about six weeks ago, I trenched for the electrical. I got that all into the building, uh, four different circuits. I've got outlets and lights and switches and all that sort of stuff done. Um, I've insulated, I've hung drywall, and um, next is gonna be taping and mudding, and then I have to refinish the floors. And um, I still have to trench for the plumbing. Um, I got the drains in. And I still have to uh, hook up a mini split unit so, and build a deck. So there's just a lot of work uh, involved in building a, a structure, a detached structure from a house. I'd obviously would have preferred to have had it somewhere in the house, but it just wasn't an option for me. I have a small house and uh, there was nowhere to put it. So that's kind of the update. I'm still working on it. It's just a lot of work for one person to do by themselves. Um, but I do plan on putting out a video kind of towards the end of fall, hopefully I can get it all done, of a tour and just kind of explaining the process as I go through the tour of the darkroom. Um, but that's the update and I'm gonna pack up camp now and uh, I'll see you guys at the next location.
Well, it's now about uh, five hours since I last saw you and I was photographing in Mammoth and all of a sudden it just started a downpour. So I packed up quickly, got out of there and uh, just kept driving. And I, I figured the rain was gonna stop at a certain point, but uh, even when I got here, it was still raining. So now I'm only about four and a half hours from the Redwoods. So that's kind of good. It gave me a chance to get some driving in, cover some distance. Um, and I stumbled upon this scene here. I got these two pines just kind of sitting out in the middle of this lake. And I think this is a bunch of flooding that happened here from the heavy uh, winter that we had in California this year. Um, and I really like this composition. It's very, it's very minimal. Um, there's a lot of open space and it's kind of a, kind of a romantic photograph. So that's at least what, what drew me to it. Right now I'm just waiting for the cloud to cover the sun because it's currently flaring my lens and there's no real way to, to shade the lens when the, when the sun's that low. Um, so I'm just waiting for that and then I'll probably make a, an exposure and I'll see you guys over at camp. Right. Well, that was a pretty fun day. Made some exposures, got a lot of ground covered on the road, and uh, found a really nice campsite for this evening, so pretty happy about that. But I do want to continue answering the questions that I received this season, and the next one is, what kind of film can you get for 4x10, and where do you get it, and uh, do you cut your own film? So those questions I get all the time, especially since I put out that uh, video about the 4x10 reducing back. I just want to kind of answer it, but I do want to do a separate video showing you the process of cutting film because that's, a, that's, another, that's another deal and I don't want to, you know, tell you to do something. It's much easier just to show you how to do it. So here's, here's the quick answer. Ilford has the ULF program every year. 
Um, last year I ordered 75 sheets of FP4 in 4x10. I think each box was about 90 bucks, which is a lot cheaper than 8x10 film. So I think it's worth it, um, shooting that dedicated format. So I ordered 75 sheets and, um, you know, I don't shoot that much. So that'll probably last me two years, I would imagine, maybe even three. Um, and then the other thing that I do sometimes, if I want to shoot color, um, I use, I don't use scissors to cut the film, don't do that. I use a rotary trim cutter. So you basically make some registration marks on one side that you can push the film against. Emulsion side goes up. You lift the little thing that holds the film flat, slide that in there, um, and then make a quick rip, and you have two sheets of film. So it's a little tricky um, to do, unless you have a dedicated uh, dark area to do that. I've tried it in a changing bag. It's not easy, I don't recommend that. You kind of have to have a dark room. So um, the, the only reason I say it's tricky is because you can very easily misalign the film and cut it kind of crooked, or um, you can get confused like which side is the emulsion because remember you're cutting, you're cutting the notches off one of the sides. So you have to keep track which side is emulsion up and which side is emulsion down. So I think uh, the way that I do it is I typically just cut it and right when I cut it, I load those two sheets into a holder that's right next to me. And that keeps it pretty simple and uh, easy to keep track of everything. So, um, but hopefully that answers your question on the four x 10 format and availability for film. Um, but I'm gonna eat some dinner and I will see you guys in the morning. morning. I'm about four and a half hours now from the Redwoods and today I think I'm just going to continue driving up there, find a campsite, kind of settle in, and if I have any time I'll probably do a little bit of scouting as well. But I want to continue answering some questions. So one of the questions that I get, well I shouldn't say one, it's more like a group of questions that I get all the time are uh, gear related questions. So you know what kind of lenses do you recommend? What kind of 4x5 camera should I get? What kind of bag do you recommend? So I don't really think that there's, um, that's all a lot of personal preference. And I think what I'll end up doing is kind of a what's in my bag type of video and show you what I use. But I will start off by saying, I don't have any experience um, with 4x5. I've actually never shot a 4x5 camera. So I've been shooting 8x10 since I was 19. And uh, I have a lot of experience with 8x10, so I'll kind of come at it with, kind of I'll come at it with that kind of experience. I can't recommend any 4x5 cameras or 4x5 lenses, um, but I will say if I were to get a 4x5 camera, I would probably end up sticking with the two brands that I uh, use currently, and that is the Toyo and the Canon. Um, so KB Canon. He's out in Arizona, he makes great equipment, um, and Toyo from Japan, also really high quality equipment. Um, so they have the VX125 or the 45A, and Canem has a 4x5 that's also a 5x7 chassis, so you can kind of swap the backs. And that gives you a little more Bella's draw, and you can use really wide angle lenses on that. He also makes a metal field camera. So I, I recommend those two cameras. If I were to get a four x five, that's probably the direction that I would go. Um, but I think doing a separate what's in my bag type of video is really gonna answer a bunch of questions as far as gear goes and uh, hopefully um, give you some sort of direction if you're putting your four x five camera kit together and uh, you can kind of see what I've figured out as I've gone uh, throughout the years. But. I'm gonna get my camp packed up and I will see you in the Redwoods.
So I'm currently making a two minute and 53 second exposure on some FP4. I shot this scene in the horizontal orientation. Now I'm doing a vertical. Um, I think I, I like both. I may like the vertical a little bit more, but I do get a few of the highlights in on the vertical. So I think what I may end up doing is just pulling this out of the developer a little bit earlier than I normally would. And uh, hopefully retaining a good amount of highlights, detail, and uh, getting a bunch of these shadows in here. But uh, pretty, pretty long exposure, and there is no wind, so that's really nice. Well, as it turns out, there was a very slight breeze that day, just enough to sway the branches in the upper left and right hand corners on both my horizontal and vertical compositions. Well, I left the redwoods right around like 10 a.m. yesterday. Got some nice fog, but I had to start heading my way back home. Uh, my wife's birthday is in two days, and I want to be there, obviously, for that. Got some plans for her. Um, she's turning 40, by the way. It's a big one. So I, I do want to answer one more question as we shoot hate that I said that, by the way. I do want to answer one more question before we end this video, and that is... Um, are we seeing the prints or are we seeing scans of the film in these videos? So I would love to show you prints, but I don't have the darkroom up and going and that would just take forever for me to you know, print each, each exposure I make. So these are just scans. Um, I use an Epson V850 flatbed scanner and I take things into Photoshop. I scan things pretty flat and then I take them into Photoshop, do a curves adjustment and that's what you see in the video. But uh, if you notice on my website, I don't have any black and white work on there. And that's because they're gonna look much different than the scans. And I want the website to represent what my prints will look like. So once I get the darkroom done, I'm gonna focus on getting my website updated. But um, one other thing I wanna mention is between this season and the next, there's gonna be a little bit of a pause. I wanna focus on getting that darkroom done and um, I have a few Patreon videos that I'm working on too. So with all that being said, thanks so much for watching this season. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm gonna focus on this photograph, but I will see you for season three.